in the land of grills. Let's do the second mod to the master build. This is the Autolite. This is the Autolite 545. And folks, as you can see, I've got the bigger master build, Gravity, the 1050. I've got, still got that little guy. And I had a medium one, too. I painted that one blue. And that's what we're doing today. It's all about the paint. A lot of you folks have said, first of all, Tom, why do you paint your grills? And it's because I, I, I want to. It's my grill, my choice. Uh, and then other people have asked, hey, can you go through the process of how you do that? And that's what we're going to do today. Now, we already did one mod to this grill. And then if you have this grill, you know by now... Uh, this thing, this is the charcoal, this is the ash basket, is way too small. So, for 12 bucks and a little bit of sheet, sheet metal and a couple uh, sheet metal screws, we doubled, well, we doubled it plus. And it, it actually worked very well. We did our first cook with it yesterday. Um, so, that was successful. And now we're going to do something that's not really, it's, it's more aesthetic, but it makes it look cool. And, you know, you just don't have to do it with... Uh, Orange, you can do it with whatever color you want. You can do it with your favorite team color. Uh, a lot of people do that. They customize your grills to their, you know, because you're always grilling on game day. So a lot of people do it to their grills. All right, let's get this lid off. And remember, it's just taking this right there, that, that guy off right there, and that guy off right there. And then I'll show you the procedure for prepping this and painting it. All right, down in the shop, uh, taking the lid off is real easy. I showed you the two bolts two nuts that you got to take off. And then the next thing is, uh, if you put it together, you, knew, you know how to take off the handles. If not, there's four screws there. And then the badge has, uh, looks like two bolts. So we'll pull all that off and start a prep. All right, got the badge off, got the handle off. Uh, I put in a uh, warranty claim on this. I haven't heard back from them. But uh, put the screws back in, the bolts back in so I don't lose everything. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the paint. And uh, so this is what I was using. This engine enamel from Rust-Oleum. I went back to the store where I got this. They don't have it anymore. It's been replaced with this 600 degrees ceramic coating. So I don't know how that's going to work. The color bases on the caps look kind of close. So <laughs> I bought two cans of this. There's about a half a can here. That's not going to be enough to do that. I can tell you that right now. So I'm not even going to bother trying to mix and match them because who knows how this coating is going to be compatible with a ceramic. I've never sprayed a ceramic coating before, so this could be good. This could be bad. So let's uh, tell you, let's, we're going to do some light sanding on this. All right, so a lot of debate whether you should remove all the old paint. I've done that before. I've taken it down the bare metal and then primed and painted. Uh, but uh, what I've done the past couple times is I've just smoothed this off and tried to leave. And in, in, in the ridges here, I understand it'll probably remove it. Once you start sanding, folks, remember, you're now committed. So remember, you're, you're avoiding the warranty. I do that a lot. And I've, I've just got a, a cordless random orbit. And this is, uh, I think I got 120 here. 120 is what I'm going to start with. I'll probably go to 220. And then uh, I'm going to clean it with some brake cleaner, which I'm going to do that outside because remember, brake cleaner has a tendency to be flammable and get that cleaned up. Uh, we're going to tape off these edges with uh, blue painter tape. And uh, super, super simple, give you a couple of looksies. All right, so this is what I'm looking for. I don't know if you can see that, but the random orbit won't get into these corners. So I'll just take a sanding block here, flexible sanding block, and just uh, get into those corners. And I just want to rough this up a little bit. And uh, you can see I got a shiny spot right down there where I went through that, that that's okay. All right, got everything sanded. And uh, you're wondering what the extent I go to. And I'm going to stop right here. Remember, the smoke all comes out back here. So painting this orange, it's just going to get, that's going to get stained really quick. Uh, so we're going to leave that black. And now we're going to start with our blues, blue painters tape. And I'm just going to use this ridge. This ridge is very handy in uh, making this as a natural transition to leave this black and have this all be orange. And then uh, I'll use this right here as a transition for orange and then black. All right, got blue painter, painters tape on. You can do the whole side if you want. It's, you know, I, I'm pretty comfortable with this. And you can see I've got some glossy areas here yet that I got to sand. In fact, I put 220 on here now, and I'm going to go over this with 220. And then we're going to clean it real good, and then we'll be ready to paint. Super simple. All right, you got to make sure you get your uh, paint can nice and shook it up. Now I have cleaned this. I am going to open up the door for the painting process. A lot of pollen here at spring here in Wisconsin. So we're going to leave the door open for the ventilation and you get a better feel for what the outside light. It is a sunny day today. And then once I've got that first coat, I'm going to do two, two coats 
Um, and once I get that first coat on, close the door just to kind of keep the, I'm going to get some pollen in here, but I, I just want to, I want a whole lot and uh, let this dry. And it's in the mid fifties here in my garage right now. It's in the forties outside. So uh, it says minimum temp, I think is in the fifties for this paint. And uh, once that's dry, then we'll do a second coat and then we'll let it sit for overnight and then take a look at it in the morning. Let's uh, get the paint. All right, so this goes relatively quick. And uh, you just keep in mind that you're gonna be giving this a second coat. And it is windy too, so this is not helping much. It's gonna go like that, call that good. And then we're gonna come around to the front. I know you can't see this very good. Uh, hang on. Now, you, and now I can see better. Always keep your paint can moving. First coat done, close the door. Show you a second coat. All right, apologize, didn't show you the second coat. Just wanted to do it real fast. So on this coat, you know, the first coat we went this way. This coat we went this way. And uh, let's call it a dry. Take a look at it. I've got plenty of paint. If I need to do a third coat, I'll do a third coat. All right, so I did a third coat. There was enough in the can to do three. Every spray paint is different. This spray paint, it seemed like you know, I had to put more on in order to get uh, a decent finish. So we did uh, first coat going this way, second coat doing this way, and then the third coat we did, did uh, pretty heavy going uh, that way. And it, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let this dry and then uh, I'm probably gonna take it in the basement overnight where it's a little warmer and uh, give you a look-see tomorrow when we all put it back together. Looking good. All right, it's not the next morning. It's about six hours later and uh, it really looks nice. now. I didn't tape everything and I got some overspray, some orange overspray on there on both sides, which just broke my heart when I saw it. But I was able to take a little acetone here. Remember that's highly flammable too. And uh, on some uh, paper towel, I took it right off. So I'm um, thrilled with that because I was thinking I was gonna have to repaint all the black. But uh, right now all I'm doing is the two, Nuts that fit in that hole right there. There's one there and one on the other side. I have painted those. And uh, this will be ready to go back on the grill in the morning. See you there. All right, so there's the final product. I, it's not the same exact color as that. That one's a little darker. I actually like that color. But you gotta, you gotta work with what you got. And that's what I got. And maybe it'll darken up once I get some heat on it. I am gonna, um, I am gonna fire it up today. But only at 250 for a while and let the stuff bake in a little bit better and then uh you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make pizza on this thing oh yeah i'll make pizza keep watching tom horseman youtube to see that i like the little touch of uh doing the bolts in the back orange too you know it's it, this doesn't improve the way that this girl cooks but heck of a lot of fun to do and uh Customize your grill. All you gotta do is watch Tom Horseman on YouTube. Don't forget to check out the other. If you have one of these, then you want to do the must-have uh, modification of uh, doubling plus the size of your ash basket. Tom Horseman on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Hey, you know what? If you want to support the channel, buy me a beer. Super thanks down below. Thanks for watching, folks.